Let's talk about selling our services. So I know that there's a lot of people in the audience who are personal trainers, yoga teachers, Pilates teachers, health and wellness practitioners. And I myself, I used to own gyms for 10 years in a highly competitive area, which is downtown LA. And then also transitioning out of that career, I moved into a sales and marketing position leading a network marketing organization where we sell superfoods to health and wellness practitioners and customers, which means that the whole sales process is very dialed in, in, in my mind. So I'd like to share from my perspective, how to go about selling our services because selling for me has completely elevated my life. There's no way for me to own and operate a gym in a highly competitive area like downtown Los Angeles without understanding some of the components of a sale. And sales are essentially a service, right? We are selling a service or a product. And even the act of sales is serving somebody because a salesperson is essentially a consultant or a messenger. It's consulting a client and then making a suggestion on what is the best fit for the client. And that's what we are as salespeople. So if you guys are providing a product or service, definitely drop it in the comments and or, well, actually just the comments or the chat is what I was going to say. And let's talk. Let's talk about some of the aspects of selling our services. Now, I haven't mentioned money yet, but we can sell things for money. But from my perspective, that's actually not the thing that the client is most concerned with because a lot of the times what we're selling is their investment. It's their energy. It's their time. And then on top of that, it's money. So on the surface, it may seem like money is the thing that is the transaction. However, there's a lot more. So for instance, if you're a personal trainer or a yoga teacher or a physical therapist, you're presenting a plan for a client. In the client's mind, they're paying either the bulk price for the plan or per hour or per solution but also that's going to require them to commit to coming to the clinic, coming to the gym a certain amount of times per week, a certain amount of time during each day that they do that. And essentially what we're trying to do, what we're aiming to do for the client's benefit is to position the value greater than all of those costs. So the, the main cost is money, time, energy. There's also a cost of risk to the client because the client has a risk that they're going to be investing all of this time, money, energy. And the risk is that the solution that they're seeking doesn't get met. And that's all in the client's mind when you're talking to them before the sale is quote closed, before the deal is secure and understanding that and positioning a conversation around that is very helpful. I talk to a lot of people, I've talked to a lot of people in the past who are doing all sorts of things with the end goal being doing it for money. That's called being a professional. The main difference between an amateur and a professional is that the professional gets paid to do it. And a lot of times the amateur pays to do it. So take a sport, for instance, or, or a musical performance. If you're a musician, an amateur musician, you're paying for your instruments. You're paying for the trainers that are teaching you. You're paying for time in a studio. If you're a professional, you're likely getting paid for all of that. Even trainers will work deals out to teach you for free because there's a lot of value that's added into that. You're even getting paid to eat. You're getting paid to play because you're getting sponsorship deals if you get shown eaten a certain supplement, a certain cereal, not that cereals are a health food, but you're getting paid to do these things as a result of you being a professional. And so if you're a teacher of some sort and you're doing things 
without getting paid, you're essentially, it's costing you time, energy, it's costing you things. So you're paying for it. And then, so there's that wall between amateur and professional when it comes to teaching. And so what I'd like to structure this conversation mostly about is the conversation that builds value before you get to the point where you position your offer. And once again, this is, this is from my experience, this is how we teach our salespeople in our Perium organization. And it's a very simple structure. That's why I'd like to go over it today. It is far from the only one. It could, this can get way more dynamic. There can be a lot more quote techniques that are better for certain marketplaces. And speaking of marketplaces, that's actually number one, is that if you are offering a service or a product, comprehending your marketplace and actually positioning yourself in the right markets is very important. And a marketplace isn't necessarily a type of person that you're looking for. A marketplace is the place where these types of people exist. And as a professional hanging out in these places, either digitally, digitally, I added a little, uh, an extra syllable in there, either digitally or physically being in the marketplace where the people that are ready to invest in themselves, they're already walking in that direction. They're just intending on choosing a specific path and you being one of those paths, positioning yourself in that market is going to allow you to secure deals, secure a professional career in a way that fulfills you. Because ideally for me, the reason why I'm so passionate about this is that my main mission is to assure that people are having the tools to live the life of their greatest desires, their greatest version of self. If we can all be professional in our zone of genius, the world is a better place. If we're all in the highest passion, the highest integrity, the highest joy, it makes for more joyful, happier, fulfilled people that we all get to interact with. And all of these people are creating our reality. And so identifying whether people enjoy their career, their job, their business, and positioning them in something that is a better fit if they do not enjoy or have a strong alignment with their career path. Alignment is everything within this reality. And there's so many forces working against us to get us out of alignment, which is going to reduce our power. So when it comes to creating reality, the first step is to be in alignment. And that means alignment with thoughts, emotions, actions, the thoughts in your head, like what is your visual picture of an ideal reality? Are you feeling your current reality is in match with that ideal vision, that ideal perspective of life? And your feelings, your, your mental awareness is in alignment. Are you acting in accord, cord, accord? That's a amazing word. Are you acting in accord? Word is like alignment that's in tune right? It's in sync. So are you in accord, in alignment with your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions? Because your actions, where do most people spend their physical day doing something that we call a job or a career? Or uh, ideally, before I get into that, ideally, we're all adding value to society, doing what we love. So it's no longer those words, job, career, business, busyness, right? Those, those words no longer serve proper labels for what we're doing. If we are integrated properly into society, we have found our zone of genius. We have found our passion and we have applied other skills on top of that 
like the skill of sales and we're able to support this passion so that we can get better at it because we're practicing it every single day in a way that we love because it's not practice makes perfect. It's intentional practice that's intentional, meaning it's pushing our boundaries and you're actually getting feedback and making adjustments. Just practicing something without intention is not going to make you better. But if you're professionally working on something with the intention of serving your clients or self better than you did yesterday, then through that practice of many, many years, we're going to develop a society that is filled with professionals in all areas. Have you guys ever hired somebody and and they're just not there completely? And I'm not even talking about as an employee, because maybe not everyone's a business owner, but, I, but maybe even a car wash, someone to come wash your car. Some people love doing that. Like their, their human design, their astrology, like everything is like there for them to be doing that task. They, they like to care for mechanical things. Maybe human interaction isn't on their list of priorities and they like rev reviving things. And then there's other people. So I've, I've tried to always find the, the person who's in most alignment with everything. And then I've hired other people, like even just car wash type people who are amazing. Like everyone's amazing, but it doesn't seem that way when they show up dragging their feet, moping around, obviously not desiring to be there. And so how can we as a society assure that everybody fits in to where they're at in that stage of life? Because washing cars is a wonderful elevated experience for a type of person. Owning a gym is a wonderful, elevated, passionate, joyful experience to a certain type of person at a certain phase of life. Maybe they outgrow that and they're on to something else, investing, or maybe even go, going into a labor type work, like tending to gardens or teaching people about regenerative agriculture. So where can we go? Where can we sell ourselves? And everything is a sale, everything, even we're selling ourselves every single day on what to do. Okay, so the sales process, that is pretty simple. And first is understanding our clients' needs and problems that they would like to resolve. So I'm just going to use the example of, of let's say, superfoods or a health transformation. So rather than Vanna Whiting, all the great qualities about what you do, which it's not your service that you're selling, you're selling a solution to their problem. So without them identifying that they have a problem, then you have nothing to sell, right? So that's where that whole like, sell me this pen thing comes. Because if you're trying to sell the attributes of the pen, no, Nobody just needs an extra pen unless they need to write something, right? Unless they need to write something that, that signals professionalism to the person who they're signing a contract with. So those things need to be identified before you just tell the attributes of the pen. And so when it comes to a client, if you're in the health field, asking questions. So these are some simple questions you can ask somebody for them to identify their own problems because it's another skill of a, of a person who's a professional to make the transaction easier and smooth for the person to take out the credit card. We want the person to feel good about taking out the credit card and swiping it or handing over the numbers. That's our job is to make the whole process feel good. And if we can make them feel good about that, then we can make them feel good about waking up at 5 a.m. and showing up on time at 6 a.m. for us to train for an entire hour or for whatever it is. If it's a health transformation, if it's, 
If it's superfoods, it's, it's taking the products every single day. If we can elevate the experience that's hard for them, take out their credit card and make them feel good about it, then they're going to feel good. We're going to be able to get past their boundaries and walls and limiting beliefs to help them achieve success. And so people trust other people who are good at diffusing walls. I'm just giving, I've got an entire hour to talk here, so please ask questions. I'm giving a lot of tangent stories. So here's another one that I just thought of while I was talking. Think about, and this is coming from a heteronormative perspective. We can even go into the animal kingdom with this. Like, fem- I'll just do that to, make, to get us outside this human realm, which is very dynamic. Think about female animals. They have a whole bunch of defense mechanisms around them to prevent males from mating with them. A lot of times, one of those defense mechanisms is hanging out with the strongest alpha male. And that strongest alpha male is going to prevent any other males from mating with them. But it's very attractive to the females, sexually attractive to the females. You can even say magnetically attractive if another male can get around these defense mechanisms and get close enough to mate with her. And you see this across all species, even the human being. Females have all sorts of walls up. The males that are able to slide in there smoothly present themselves like past the older brother, past the, the, the resting bitch face, past everything, like that's very attractive to them. You're in the same place that they hang out at, you're around the same people. So you must be at an elevated status. Take, take birds or, or sharks, female sharks. They, they roam around in packs so that males can't just essentially rape them. But the males that, that's a bad example because of the, anyways, because of the R word. So I won't use that, but that happens in the animal kingdom. Okay, sales. So I was saying all that because people have walls up naturally because we're humans. And if we can smoothly get around those, it's very respectable to people. So a lot of people are walking around completely homogenized. Is that the right word? I'm going to use it because it's because it's an interesting take. They're homogenized their life experience, meaning that the problems are just it's just life. Right. So if they have a hurt knee, it's just life. It's not like signaling out, I have a hurt knee all the time. We've we've reduced a lot of our signals in our body because we just live with it over and over and over. Other things like maybe being 30 pounds overweight, same thing. People aren't thinking about that every single day. They've learned to not look in mirrors. They've learned to not step on scales. They've learned to dress a certain way so they fit in with the crowd without accentuating the contrast of of how they look versus others. They, they've just forgotten they're 30 pounds overweight. Until what? Until they get asked the question, what's your height and weight? So if you're in a sales position, if you're, if you're selling solar panels, you're, you're asking the question, what's your electricity bill like every, every month? So if you're selling a health program, you're going to be asking them, do you have pain? around your body. On a scale of one to 10, how would you say your stress levels are? On a scale of one to 10, how is your sleep? Do you love your job? Who does the cooking in your house? So we're asking questions because the client, the prospect, the person that you're aiming to serve has forgotten about their problems. And you cannot offer them a solution unless there's a problem. And in this, we're also building rapport, we're building trust, and we're also building ourselves as an authority figure because we cared enough to know the questions to ask them to help them realize that there's a way to make their life better. So what's your height and weight? Now, here's another thing. Once we identify a problem, what I say is we pick the scab of the problem. We can ask them about other things that they've tried. What, what, what have you tried? Have you tried solving this? Sometimes they're going to tell you yes. Sometimes they're going to tell you no. Sometimes they're going to say, yes, I've tried everything. Nothing's worked. A lot of times they're going to bring that up without you having to even ask, have you tried something? 
But in your mind, I had this stuff written down. Now it's obviously all memorized. Another question to, to, to accentuate and dive deeper into the problem is to say something like, what's your ideal weight? Now, some people are going to be underweight. Some people are going to be overweight. Some people are going to be ideal. Very few people are at their ideal weight. And the ones who are usually, should I be, this is a, how can I say this in a way that's not offensive? The ones who are at their ideal weight, I'm not going to actually say it. A lot of people who are very happy with their body, who are trying and in the gym all the time, 10 times a week, 10 to 15 times a week, that means multiple times a day. I'm, I'm hesitant to say this because I don't want it to be taken the wrong way. But I've lived in gyms my entire life. I'm friends with over 100 gym owners. I'm friends with professional athletes. I've trained professional athletes. And those types of people, a lot of them have body dysmorphia. So even if somebody is fit, there's still going to be something that they would like. And it might not be weight. It might be performance. It might be training in less time and getting the same results. So it's, it's just finding the problem. But a good example for somebody who's, let's say, five foot three woman who's 160 pounds. In your head, you're like, okay, I know what that looks like. What's your ideal weight? And they're going to say something like, my ideal weight? They're going to want to say 120, but they're going to say 130 because that's more reasonable. So they're going to say 130 pounds. Once again, they haven't thought about this probably since never. So you as a salesperson, your job is to build up the problem so that the solution, the cost of the solution is less than them continuing on with the problem. So your job is to help them identify if this was gone, my life would be that much better and trading the money, the time, the energy to get to there is less of a cost for me than continuing on with this problem or to not have the solution to this problem. So what's your height and weight? 130, what's your, or 160, what's your ideal weight? 130, you let them talk. The next question, how long has it been since you've been 130 pounds? Once again, they haven't thought about this. They go into their memory, they think about it. They live in reverse and they go back seven years or 13 years or 27 years. And they are just like, it's been 23 years since I weighed 130 pounds. What happened between then and now? Again, people don't think about this. It's, this, is, this is how we can successfully secure a sale by just asking simple questions. Let them build up their life and the possibility to change it in their own head and and we'll get to how we can have them feel it in a second. It's the next question. So what happened between 130 pounds and 160 pounds? And wait for them to tell you. And they will tell you. If they won't tell you this, then like you got to back up a few steps and build more rapport. But they're going to tell you because you've asked questions in a professional way. You're not being a creep. Just asking regular questions as it, and a consultant trying to help them figure out if this is a right program for them or not. It might not be. You don't know. You're asking questions. You are now listening to them tell you the problem and the, the reason why they have the problem. But they're not really telling you. They're, they're revealing it to themselves. You already know how this whole conversation is going to go like in the first second of either looking at them or, or hearing them speak because you're a professional, you've done this many times. So you hear them do that, okay? So now they've got their problem, how long it's been, and why. And now you're going to set a vision of the solution. Once we set the vision of the solution, have them feel what it would be like, then we build a bridge from where they are now with their problems. I don't know why I have three right here, but usually people have three problems. <laughs> you set a bridge, to the solution and that bridge is your product or service okay so now we've set the vision their ideal weight is 130 pounds you have a solution so this is where we would say something like and you would 
frame this in your own way. We would say something like, we have product packages that range from $1 a day to about $20 a day. And based on what you're telling me, what I would recommend to you is called the Ultimate Lifestyle Transformation. It starts at about $12 a day. And then it's a long-term program, so it notches down in price. It goes $11 a day for month two and three, and then it goes down to about $6 a day month four on. This isn't a contract. You can cancel any time. It's a simple product. You take it twice a day for the first three months. You're doing a potent dose for the first three months. And then after that, you go down to a maintenance dose. The upfront cost is $360. I completely skipped a step. Hold on. I'm doing a presentation, trying to remember all this. That's, that's the offer. We're still in question time. All right. So the next question, just delete everything I just said. The next question is, because you have a solution to the problem. So the next question, and apologies for that, 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 that's a, that's a hint on what's coming. But the, the solution that we're trying to build, we're, we're intending on having them feel what it's like to be solved. Okay. So their 130 pounds is their ideal weight. So you just say, what would happen if you woke up 90 days from now at 130 pounds? So you would have to translate that into your own product or service, but whatever length of time it takes for your clients to achieve the goal, you would then position what would be different in your life if you woke up 90 days from now at 130 pounds. And then silence. Remember, it's been 23 years since they've been 130 pounds. What's going to change? The one other caveat question you can ask is how would you feel? What would be different in your life? Questions like that. If they're they're struggling for words and they're going to say things like I can play with my grandkids. I can buy the clothes that would really make me feel good. I would start exercising and not be embarrassed to go to the gym. I and same thing if the person has knee pain or back pain or neck pain or skin problems or doesn't have the mobility that they would like or they can't play a sport because of an injury, all, all like you're translating your product or service that helps somebody. And you just say, at the end of the time frame that you know that you can guarantee their success, what would change in their life? So now they've built up what it feels like. You ask them, how would that make you feel? So now they, they envision the solution. And now we've got the problems. We've identified what life would be like without the problems. Now it's the bridge. And then it's the offer. And you heard me say a little bit about my offer. I've said it so many times that I just, for some reason, filled in the blank with that. But it's essentially let them know that you've got packages that range in prices and what you're looking to be the mess, the, what you're consulting them on is the best match for their problem. And it's going to take this time frame and this is what you can expect. On average, people lose about 10 pounds a month. So we're looking at about three months and you're at 130 pounds and you can play with your grandkids. You might want to throw in something in there. At this point, the sale's done. You've made an offer, you've made a, you've made a suggestion. And then the next question, which a lot of people struggle with, you can say something like, do you have any questions about this? But they usually will ask you a question or they'll give you an objection. So question or objection. And so you can answer the question and objections are amazing because objections are really just another question. It's another opportunity for you to share a story, share a value about your product or service. So they might say that's a lot of money. And this is, I'm not going to give a whole sales training on this because my, my goal is to just get everybody here working as professional as possible. If you're still working at a cafe or a grocery store, somebody's saying right now, I'm very esoteric and I have a hard time using more sales type language. Yes. So the sales, the, the esoteric stuff about them being in, in their greatest stuff. And there's a, what's the, what's the word? Energy exchange. The energy exchange is this, just saying something like that doesn't actually doesn't actually secure the deal. So because you use that language, it almost like signals that you, you, 
you could be taken advantage of because what if $30 to them is the proper energy exchange for something that you're saying is, is $200 of, of cost. Obviously we never sell things that are overpriced or like basically worth more than the value. We're bringing out the problems, positioning the value of not having those problems and then pricing our service of our products or services based on something that's fair. There's always the possibility that we could take advantage of vulnerable people, vulnerable people with this progression of communication. And keep in mind, if your intention is to serve people, then that's going to be the field that you create around yourself. If your invention is, if your intention is to rape and pillage society and extract as much stuff as possible from those around you and to dominate and to get as much as possible for as little effort on your end, then that's the field of reality that is attracted and harmonized around you because that's the activity, that's the mindset, that's the feeling state that you're in. And that's a very real phenomenon. And money means different things to everybody. And a lot of times what we do with that money and, and the reason for making money is shifting throughout our life. And sometimes we require a lot of money and sometimes we don't require a lot of money dependent on where we are and our products and services that we're offering will shift based on that. If we are taking care of family members that like maybe our parents or even our kids, then we're requiring a, a, a bigger currency, a bigger flow of currency coming into our family and out of our family. And sometimes we don't need any money coming in because there's energy that's supporting us all around us. And so that's for us all to consider. This whole thing was just about creating a sales conversation that feels good for everybody. Ask about their problems, ask how long, ask about their ideal solution to those problems, ask how long it's been since they've, if they've ever had things better, how long has that been? What happened? What's the reason for that problem? And then what would life look like without the problem? And then the bridge that you build from the problems to the solution is your product or service, and it costs this much. They're going to ask questions or they're going to have objections. An objection is something like, I don't have the time for that. I don't have the money for that. I need to ask my partner. And you can easily Google, or I can talk about specific ones, easily, easy ways to, again, absorb that and display value because we all object everything. Every single one of us, when we go into a store where we're going to buy something and the salesperson says, can I help you? 99% of the time, what are you saying? No, thanks. No, thanks. So everybody's programmed to say, no, that's too much money. I know exactly how you feel. I felt the same way. And what I found out was why it's not too much money. And then that, that's, that's for everybody to develop on their own. But most of the time, our product or service is going to help them save money. Whether it's their gut is going to change, they're going to stop craving so much food or so much junk food that they need they need to eat a lot of, or it's going to replace meals or working out is going to, you know, it's going to cost them an hour to 90 minutes every single morning, but it's going to create more mental focus, more energy for the whole rest of their day so that they perform at an elevated level. So instead of getting three hours a day of productivity, they're going to be getting 16 hours a day of productivity and one and a half to two hours of that is going to be with me in the gym. And then the whole right, you get your 14 hours back on top of that. So you can continue on with three hours 
of focus that you just told me about. Remember, you just told me 15 minutes ago that you go to work and you just feel tired and sloppy and you feel like taking a nap all day long and you can't think. So a lot of the times you have the problems that you can handle the objections with and you essentially just say, I can completely understand how you feel that way. So many people feel that way or I felt that way. And what I found was this, like, and then you say the thing that's, that's the reason why that's actually not a reason not to do something. It's actually a reason to do the thing. If you don't have any time, you don't have any money, this is going to help you get both it's going to get more of that for you. And then the last question, are you ready to get started today? If you don't know what to ask for a closing question, again, there's many, many other different ways to do this. But for a simplicity standpoint, is this something you'd like to get started on next week? You know, if it's like, let's say training. So we're going to get started on this next week. Are you looking to get started on this today? And then wait. And then they've got it. They've got an answer for that. They're adults. But if you don't ask that question, you're like, okay, I'm going to send you more information. Take care. Nice talking to you. You, Like that's you not positioning yourself as a professional. You will not be treated as one. They will not give you money if you are not acting in accord as if you deserve it. It's very rare that we're ever going to get more than we feel like we deserve. So there's a whole other thing with mindset going into this process as well. And not everybody's working in the service industry. I get that. Not everybody's working in, in, in a position where they sell. But this can all be helpful for everybody in every situation. Because let's say your goal, your intention is to get your kids to shovel the snow off the driveway. How can you help them see the benefit that that gives to them. It's exercise, gets them out in the fresh air, helps them build muscle, bigger shoulders if they're a guy. It's going to make them stronger for the sports that they're playing, teach them a game that you used to play while you're doing little chores like that. And building up that there's a problem. They just said they were bored. Oh, you're bored? Why are you bored? When was the last time that you weren't bored? Oh, so you're using your body. You're using your body and you're sweating. Could you imagine if you're doing something right now where you're using your body and sweating and outside? I might know of something that has all of that. Come with me. Let me show you. So using the same process in a variety of scenarios will help out. I feel like the stream has ended. I'm getting, I'm getting a warning sign. So I'm going to stop right now.